saloon and I win everything. Plus, I only train champions in the ring. All the other fighters will really turn green when they see my knockouts hit the screen. Knockouts. A knockouts. So come on, everybody. Meet the girls. They're much more than sugar, spice, or curls. Each one's a fighter with a heck of a punch. Then don't turn them off or you'll feel their crunch. Knockouts. A knockouts. They're hot, they're good, they're wild and sexy. You know you're gonna watch them if you're 10 or 60. Oh, do you want a knock em, or do you want a treat? Well, watch my girls fight in your ringside seat. Knockouts. A knockouts. My name is Brooklyn and I've perfected the way to get big things erected. I do my work, no ifs and buts, but baby, I'm best with bolts and nuts. Knockouts. A knockouts. I'm from New York and here to say, I'm the broad who made Broadway. You better be tough, baby. I got plans for a big jackhammer in my hand. Ooh. Knockouts. A knockout. One last thrill, I'll have her buried on Boot Hill, yeah. Knockouts. A knockouts. I'm Mary Jo, your yellow rose. I ride the range in pantyhose. I'm from Dallas, that's my home. I'll show you where the buffalo roam. A knockouts. A knockouts. A western girl's got to be tough I'm one rider who likes it rough So I make sure some time is found For you and me to horse around Knockouts A knockouts I'm fighting Brooklyn, she's from the city When I get done, she won't be pretty Cause this cowgirl's gonna whip her tail And Brooklyn's gonna hit the trail Knockouts A knockouts My girls are beauties, but they're tough They wanna show you all their stuff So each one'll make you scream out Wow, there's nothing my girls won't do right now my name is Melanie and I'm a fine I'm a lumberjack with an axe to grind I'm from up north as you can see Just like the trees, men pine for me Knockouts A knockouts To me a man's a piece of wood When they're both hard you know they're good I'm one tough lady and that's a fact And if you don't like it you can kiss my axe A knockouts A knockouts I'm gonna battle Valerie And that girl is out of her tree Business she thinks she's so wise But I will cut her down to size Knockouts A knockouts A corporate raider, I'll buy you now and sell you later. Executives are my best friends. I give great dividends. <laughs> knockouts. A knockouts. Men are like stock for all I care. I'll make sure I'll get my share. Once I control your company, you'll do your best work under me. They'll give you lefts, they'll give you rights. 
They're gonna give you action fights. I'm Kir Colombian. I'm Cartela. Muy caliente. Watch out, fella. I smuggle goods for any price. Now I'm Miami's biggest vice. Knockouts. A knockouts. This letter's in the driver's seat. When you're with me, you'll feel the heat. So be a partner in my crime. Together we can do hard time. Knockouts. A knockouts. When I fight Gringa Bonnie Sue, stupid I won't know what to do. She wish she had wound up theses. I'll turn that beauty into a beast. A knockouts. A knockouts. Sue and Betty Jane, the whole world's favorite beauty queen. You see me once and you'll want more. The judges all know how I score. A knockouts. A knockouts. In competition, I'm the best. The others can't withstand my chest. I always have my hand held high. The deck is stacked and so am I. A knockouts. A knockouts. Cartella thinks she's really hot, but I'll show everyone she's not. 'Cause every bit of Latin pride won't help her when I tan her hide. A knockouts. A knockouts. My fighters have that special flair. They'll make you love 'em. If you dare, they can be sweet or they can be mean, but they're the best you've ever seen. I'm Wendy, cheering on the team. I'm every football player's dream. When they see me, they change their tone. They want a piece of my end zone. A knockouts. A knockouts. I cartwheel and I do the splits. My body never calls it quits. I love to stretch out every joint. I'll help you score that extra point. A knockouts. A knockouts. I'll wipe up Dixie with one flip for the robe, the money, and the championship. That big marine's headed for defeat. Her only move will be retreat. A knockouts. Well, shut my mouth. I'm on maneuvers way down south. My name is Dixie. I bear arms. Come and surrender to my charms. Knockouts. A knockouts. Your rifle and your bayonet will never, ever stop my threat. Come see me if you're full of fight. My boudoir is the battle side. That Wendy, one, two, three. The champion's robe belongs to me. I'm one of the few and one of the proud. She won't need a robe; she'll need a shroud. A knockouts. A knockouts. You met my girls; they're ready to go. They planned a very special show, so you can scream or you can shout. But let the knockouts knock you out. And we're joining this warm-up match already in progress. Alexis from Beverly Hills is in white, and the Beastmaster is in black. But she may wind up in black and blue. Special guest referee Nutsy Fagan trying to separate the combatants, and he almost winds up part of the action. Alexis enraged the Beastmaster by coming to the ring in a fur coat. The wild woman declares she's going to skin Alexis and wear her home. Now scoring effectively with those blows.
Officials Jacqueline Stallone and Hal Stone watching intently at ringside. Now let's go back and catch some early action. The wealthy Alexis works her foe to the ropes and nails the Beastmaster with those powerful blows to the head. Give that girl an aspirin. And the Beastmaster turns the tables. Up until this point, she'd been tamed by her opponent. She needs to let the animal out to take this fight. And the woman in black takes the offensive. Maybe she smells blood, although it's probably Alexis's perfume. She's pounding the Beverly Hills girl from pillar to post. And Alexis hits the deck. The Beastmaster was way behind on the scorecards, but she may have just rendered those cards useless, and Alexis as well. Now let's get the official word from ring announcer Dennis Morgan. the win, leaving Alexis down and out in Beverly Hills. The crowd not happy with the wild woman. They lead the jeers while she asks for cheers. Let's go back and catch that knockout. The Beastmaster all over her foe like a cheap suit. And the thought of wearing a cheap suit is enough to send the Beverly Hills girl down for the count. But the wild one decides to hasten that journey with a few parting shots. Don't I look neat in this outfit? Of course. Most elephants look good in trunks. Ladies, please. Talk like that will make me blush. Good. A little red will go with the black and blue I'm going to give you. Did anyone check that varmint's green card? They'll be checking your vital signs when I'm through with you. Them's fighting words. Oh, yeah, horse face. Excuse me, ladies. Are you decent? Yes. That's good, because I'm not. Listen, I have good news, and I have bad news. What's the bad news? The state requires you all to be thoroughly examined before your matches. Then what's the good news? I get to do it. <laughs> Gal. I like romance. What's my dream date? That's easy. An intimate candlelight dinner for two. Fine wine, flaming young, cherries jubilee. And afterwards, some good conversation, a cozy fire, and doing it till my eyes fall out. Yo, Doc, I'm Brooklyn. Brooklyn? I spent a lot of time in Flatbush. Are you a good doctor? Sure. You never hear any of my patients complain. How come? Dead men tell no tales. <laughs> Say, why don't we go out tonight? 
Listen, Sawbones, anybody who goes out with me has to be real healthy. What do you mean? Well, I wouldn't date a guy who didn't have a knee, because that would mean he had pneumonia. And I wouldn't date a guy who didn't have a back, because that would mean he had bacteria. Well, in that case, we better call the whole thing off. Why? What do you have? Prickly heat. <laughs> Tracy Lords, what a piece. She even makes me feel hot. I know, she's beautiful. I'd love to meet her. Then let's go and have a devil of a time. Wait, you just can't approach her like that. Go to heaven. Don't listen to that goody two-shoes. He's still upset because he lost Jim Baker to me. Let's go. Tracy Lords is a movie star. You're just a referee. She probably only dates other movie stars. <laughs> He's got a point. So what? I've got two of them. And if it's movie stars she wants, I know just what to do. <laughs> Hey, yo, Tracy Lord. Oh, hi, Rocky. Hey, what did you think of my boxing career? I think it's like a work of art. Really? Yeah, you've been smeared on more canvases than a Picasso. <laughs> Howdy, I'm Mary Jo. I'm tall in the saddle. And I'm Dr. Fondle. I'm short in the inseam. I want to get into medicine. How about a little medicine getting into you? But I want to learn. I'm considering medical school. Hmm, you could probably get in under the endowment plan. Do you think you could show me the ropes? I prefer satin sheets myself. Is there anything we can go over now? How about the treatment for snake bite? Okay. Good. Now, the first thing you must do is locate the bitten area and suck out the poison. Now, suppose I was bitten right on my... What would happen? You would die! Brooklyn, I want you to think of me as a building in New York City. Good! I'll have you torn down next week! <laughs> Welcome back! The combatants will battle non-stop until there is a winner. Introducing first, from Dallas, Texas, the wild and wooly cowgirl, Mary Jo! And her opponent, from New York City, the earthy construction worker, Brooklyn! to rumble. East meets West, and they don't like each other. The cowgirl is a rugged customer, and if you ask Brooklyn why she wears an eye patch, she just says, you should have seen the other five guys. Mary Jo shows her how she used to punch cattle, but remember, they never punched back. Look 
Island windmilling that arm like the Coney Island Ferris wheel. And she takes over on the cowgirl, holding and hitting. Referee Nutsy Fagan issuing a warning. In this cat fight, as long as the gloves are on, boxing rules must be observed. But once they come off, anything goes. Brooklyn mauling her foe. Going out of her way to deliver those low blows. She learned all her moves on the street. The alley was closed. The ref takes a point away from her, and she responds by giving him a few lumps. She slams her foe to the mat. In this cat fight, she's ready to make the fur fly. And Mary Jo shows her how to hit the trail. It was only a matter of time before this one erupted, and these two could make Mount St. Helen seem calm. ditched one glove already and corrals the Texan. And it's not an okay corral for her. And they both go over the ropes. And Brooklyn gives her a face full of canvas. And again. The construction worker makes her own rules and then breaks them. And Mary Jo slams her into that steel ring post. girl can tussle with anyone. She went to J.R. Ewing's finishing school. But the city girl's ready to finish her off. She virtually stuffs her into the audience. And for the Texan, that's not the right stuff. Mary Jo makes it back to the ring to stop that 20 count. But the construction girl says, don't count on it. She works her into a step over toe hold. Mary Jo able to kick out. And she gives the audience a souvenir. The ref tolling the count again. If they don't make it back by 20, they'll both be disqualified. Brooklyn choking her with a tape from her hands. These brawlers have spent more time on the floor than wall-to-wall -wall carpet. The New Yorker rushes in to break the count, but the cowgirl is right on her tail like a hot branding iron. With all that tape, they're tied up like a couple of mummies, and that's no gauze for celebration. Neither fighter is able to keep this match under wraps. The audience has seen enough action to file for combat pay. Brooklyn 
trying to hog tie her foe. She's kicked into rodeo overdrive. Brooklyn decided to really treat Mary Jo like a yellow rose and does her best to plant her in the audience. And for the only knockout of the match, the two brawlers battle outside the ring and deck our cameraman. Old Sure Shot really took a shot. I really get wild after dark. That's when I'm turned on most. Mornings depress me, especially waking up in an empty bed. It means I have to face the day alone and untie myself again. Mary Jo, if I told you I wanted to play Home on the Range with you, what would I get? A discouraging word. <laughs> Hi, Tracy. You know, even with my pot belly and receding hairline, I'm still a romantic lead. Oh, yeah. Are you sure about that? Positive. As a matter of fact, how'd you like to do a love scene in my next film with me as the Joker? Oh, that would be just great. See, that way I'd have an excuse for laughing. <laughs> to more female fighting. This next match is a feature match. Three one-minute rounds of boxing. Introducing first, from General Hospital, the nasty nurse, Ann Thrax. From Argentina, the Avenger, Zora! And the combatants are ready to go. I understand Nurse Anthrax has been saying some nasty things about Zora. She's been needling her all week. The medical menace hangs her over the ropes and bulls her to the mat. That does not count as a knockdown. They go at it toe to toe. Now Zora returns the favor, pounding the nurse's head, and she may need a nurse herself after this. And Thrax connects with a shot to the head. And Zora winds up getting a taste of the canvas. The Avenger quickly makes it to her feet. She didn't find it a welcome mat. And she pounces on Anthrax. She doesn't want her on the ground. She wants her under it. Zora 
sprays the nurse with a mouthful of water. But it seems to be just what the doctor ordered. Anthrax may be a wet nurse, but she's hanging Zora out to dry. The nasty nurse drops the Avenger. But Zora's up before the count. She won't take that lying down. And again, Anthrax forces her to the ropes. And Zora's fit to be tied. She drops the Argentinian Avenger with a hard right. Zora's seen more canvas than Rembrandt right about now. She mauls Anthrax. The two of them locked up like a crazy glue commercial. Let's go back and catch that exchange that decks Zora. The nasty nurse landing solid blows to the Argentinian's chin, and Zora does the only thing she can do. Fall. And at the start of the round, Zora says a mouthful. The Avenger decides to get a little cheeky with the round guy. And the two combatants take up right where they left off. The nurse clubs her foe with both hands. And again, the ref rules it a push, not a knockdown. Anthrax has hit Zora with everything but the kitchen sink, and that's only because she couldn't unscrew it from the wall. Zora tries for a backhand blow, but Anthrax deflects it. The nurse steps up the attack, and the Avengers hung over the ropes. She's had more hangovers than a Shriners convention. The two opponents struggle on the mat. And the nasty nurse could not put away her game opponent. The referee's decision, this match, a draw. The crowd not happy with the decision. and the errant glove tags the ref. But Anthrax was dominating Zora, tagging her with lefts and rights. Do you have the results of my examination, doctor? Yes, and I'm prescribing plenty of bed rest. Is this a prescription? No, it's my address. The bedroom's upstairs. Have your license. You have to wait until I get one first. Then I'll sue your pants off. Calm down. You know, in honor of Valentine's Day, I'm offering chest x rays at half price. How can you afford it? I use a Polaroid. Oh. You know, I'd love to have a nude photo of you. What for? So I could treasure it forever. You know, I'd like to have a nude photo of you. Really? What for? So I could have it enlarged. <laughs> Gracie, I'm in a big fix. What's wrong, baby? The studio says I have to make a choice. It's either you or the Maltese Falcon. <laughs> what should I do? That's easy. Give him the bird. You know, Valerie, I'd be happy to start the bottom for you. Okay. You can wash my floors. They must wear boxing gloves on their free hand. 
Introducing first, from the corporate boardroom, the wily executive, Valerie! And her opponent, from Fort Lauderdale, Florida, the bouncy beach girl, Bambi! The beach girl, a substitute for Melanie, who couldn't make the required weight for this match. In order to win this match, they must drag their opponent to all four corners of this ring in succession. Hold on just one moment. Stop right now. I want you to check that on her hand. I don't think that bimbo is capable of doing anything right unless she's flat on her back. Referee, referee. Check this, uh, check this, please. Check that strap. And Valerie's ruse works. She gets the upper hand and pounds Bambi with it. A tug of war over the strap. And the Florida girl catches her foe with a shot. They struggle again. But the corporate raider stages an unfriendly takeover. She pounds her into the corner. The blonde beauty filling in for Melanie. But she may be getting more than her fill here. The lumberjack will be seen in another match on this card. But Bambi may be seeing stars right now. And she mares her to the mat. Valerie trying to collapse her foe like the stock market on Black Monday. She notches the first corner and crashes Bambi into the second. But the third is not the charm. She dumps the executive. The beach girl hip tosses her to the mat. And suddenly Valerie's stock has gone way down. Ooh, a big fist drop to the bread basket. And if there was any bread there, it's all crumbs now. The Florida girl takes her to the first corner and racks up the second. But the corporate raider locks herself into the ropes. She'd sooner sell her portfolio than loosen her grip. And a low blow sends Bambi on a downward trend. Valerie slams her foe face first to the mat. And that's one merger Bambi wasn't looking forward to. Now the executive decides to help the sand worshiper by tanning her hide. A vicious bulldog flattens her. Valerie claims the first corner. And she adds two more, like so many dividends. But Bambi puts on the brakes. And almost breaks her with that shot. And the beach girl treats her like a CD at maturity. She rolls her over. Executrix pulls out one of her tricks and downs her foe. Bambi ducks that roundhouse, but cleans house on Valerie, sending her over the ropes. she supplies the perfect addition to her outfit, a belt in the back. She 
she drops her with a ram into the turnbuckle. Now the corporate raider rises to the occasion. She sets on the third rope. But Bandy catches her with a shot to the gut. The executive may be out of business. The beach girl hauls her up. And the spine breaker dumps her like a junk bond. There's one. Two. Three. Bambi just inches away from that fourth ring post. Valerie trying to hold on for dear life. She charges in for a punch, but the beach girl drives her into the corner and takes the fourth post. the beginning of the end. Valerie takes to the air, but Bambi gives her an unhappy landing with a slashing shot to the stomach. And Valerie winds up doing herself in by charging her foe in the last corner. Bambi proved to her that life is a beach. I'm really just an old softy. I cry at weddings. I collect mementos from special evenings. I get all sentimental when I go through the family album. But there's one thing that really makes me all warm inside. Hot water. Animas. Oh. Oh. Welcome back to more Knockout Sessions. is a feature match. Three one-minute rounds of boxing. Introducing first, from San Francisco, California, Biker Babe, Torch. And her opponent, from Seattle, Washington, the lovely lumberjack, Melanie. Melanie able to get another match so she wouldn't disappoint the fans. And the round guy doesn't seem to be disappointing the ladies in attendance either. The lumberjack ready to mix it up, but Torch seems just as fired up. She must have taken a sip from her cycle before the match. The woodcutter hurls her down. Melanie ready to go out on a limb here. Torch catches her in the corner. They're swinging wildly. The lumberjack has had it in for the biker ever since she double parked her motorcycle on Melanie's parents. And Torch drops her. Melanie rocked by that blow as the biker chops her down.
And these two fighters are ready to disregard the bell. But the ref breaks them up. And the lumberjack is already warmed up for round two. She wants to show the biker she's a cut above the rest. She misses with that bolo punch, but she forces her foe to the corner. And Torch strikes back with a kick, extremely illegal. But the only time the biker ever used a rule book was when she needed to start a fire. And Melanie nails her with a hard right. The biker may be running out of gas. And the lumberjack continues with her buzzsaw-like attack. The woodcutter using her height and reach advantage over her opponent. The biker's blows have no authority. Her tank's been siphoned. And Melanie drives her to the mat again. It looks like the torch has been extinguished. Let's get the official word from Dennis Morgan. the biker is unable to put a dent in the lumberjack. But Melanie overpowers her with those sweeping shots. Timber!
To buy my affection, to me, 
gold and diamonds. <laughs> They're just empty expressions. If you really want to get to me, you should try giving the gift that keeps on giving. Handcuffs and Vaseline. Tracy, maybe you can help me get some respect. How, Rodney? I figure with your connections, maybe you can help me with my screen career. Sure, I think you'd be great for the movies. As a leading man. As an usher. You know, Bonnie Sue, with me behind you, you'd win a lot more contests. Sure. For long distance running. <laughs> Tell me, Cartella, what is your nationality? My family's from Bogota. That makes me pure Colombian. Well, my family's Welsh and Hungarian. That makes me well hung. Look, I'm here for my physical. How much is it? Twenty dollars. That's not too much. <laughs> it's all I can afford. How do you feel about dealing with criminals? Doesn't bother me. As a matter of fact, I happen to be a convicted felon myself. True? I don't believe it. Sure. Once, I was arrested for statutory rape. Statutory rape? Yeah. But if I knew it was a statue, I wouldn't have bothered. <laughs> I'm very emotional and sensitive. The simple things in life give me the most pleasure. Strolling along the beach at sunset, Watch those leaves change color as autumn approaches But the one thing that really sets my heart aflutter Is hearing those three little words The fleet's in Cartella, if I told you my dream was to date a Latin lover, what would you do? Introduce you to Julio Iglesias. Hi, Doctor. I'm Bonnie Sue and Betty Jean. Does that mean I can charge you the group rate? Oh, you're such a riot. Good. Let's have one. Please. I've got to be ready for my next beauty pageant. You know, I always thought my ex-wife was our pageant winner. Miss Congeniality? Miss Demeanor. Ah. Oh. Uh, to be in perfect shape for my next contest. In that case, let's work on speeding up the heart rate. Okay, what do I do? Take off your robe and jog in place. And that'll speed up my heart? Who said anything about your heart? <laughs> this is a special challenge match. For the first time ever, two female combatants will battle it out under international rules. There will be two three-minute rounds, and in the event of no knockdowns, the referee will decide the winner. Introducing first, from Bogota, Colombia, the fiery smuggler, Cartella! From Atlanta, Georgia, the beauty queen, Bonnie Sue Ann Betty Jean. Bonnie Sue is so polite, when she sees an ocean wave, she waves right back. Cartella really wants a piece of this girl. Take my chair off. 
sure. And the smuggler is ready to call a raid. Actually, you look just like my old mate, Consuelo. She wasn't an American either. Cartella wants the mic. Why didn't she just smuggle in her own sound system? Look, you oversized body doll. I'm an American too. The only reason you claim to be Miss America is because you have a father in every state. And they're ready to go at it before the bell. Wait, the beauty queen wants time to fix her hair. swings wildly and decks the referee. Nutsy Fagan is the first knockdown of this match. The fighters mix it up. Ooh, Bonnie connects with a hard right and catches the ref as well. Cartella works Bonnie's suit to the ropes. And the referee catches another shot. He may have been Nutsy to start with, but now he must be dizzy as well. He forces the break and the beauty queen tattoos the official. They stop to hurl insults. At least the ref can't get hurt that way. The pageant winner bulls the smuggler to the ropes. Nutsy Fagan breaks it up. And Bonnie Sue almost breaks him. And Cartella dumps him to the mat. Maybe he should stay down there. There's less chance of him getting hit that way. The official tries to break the clinch and gets caught in himself. Both fighters full of energy. Sure, the only one who's been taking a beating is the ref. I'm sure Nutsy is seriously considering trading that striped shirt in for a white flag. The smuggler tags her foe, working her to the corner. And trapping the ref, Cartella pounds away. And if this keeps up, Nutsy might throw in the towel. The official trying to restore order and keep whatever's left of his health. The fighter's going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. She misses wildly. Cartella as well. Oh, but they deliver the perfect one-two combination. I don't know if these girls can cook, but they just made mincemeat out of the ref. The crowd is counting him out. The bell doesn't stop these girls. And Nutsy makes the mistake of trying to without first checking if his health insurance is paid up. And Bonnie Sue starts things off with a sweeping right that drops the ref. That was the second mistake of the day. The first was Nutsy showing up for work. 
And Netsy proves the three is a crowd, especially if you're caught in the middle. I'm really a homebody at heart. I don't have to go out partying every night. Some of the nicest evenings are spent at home with my best friends. My kitten Fluffy, my teddy bear Pinky, and my rubber love doll, Mandingo. Tracy, how about a date? I don't think so. Come on, if you went out with me, you'd wind up with Saturday night fever. <laughs> I'd get sick a whole lot sooner than that. <laughs> Hi, I'm Dixie. I wish I was in Dixie. Doctor, I've come for the results of my tests. I have them right here, and I have good news for you, Mrs. Johnson. Oh, I'm not married. In that case, I have bad news for you, Miss Johnson. You mean I'm pregnant? When did this happen? Tonight, after a few drinks, if I'm lucky. Then I'm really okay. You're fine. I'm the one with the problem. What's wrong? Every time I sneeze, I get this sensation of complete sexual fulfillment. Really? What are you taking for it? Pepper. <laughs> That'll be all. Wendy, what do you say about you and I getting together for a gymnastics date? Great. You can start by taking a flying leap. <laughs> dreamed of my Prince Charming, but not just any man can sweep me off my feet. He's got to have those special qualities. Warmth, sensitivity, compassion, and the ability to part his hair with his tongue. Are you a real doctor? Certainly, Wendy. I took the Hippocritic Oath. Isn't that the Hippocratic Oath? Not the way I operate. Oh. <laughs> Stop crying! If you're a good girl, I'll give you a lollipop. And what if I'm a bad girl? <laughs> I'll give you 50 bucks. <laughs> What's wrong? I don't want to talk about it. Nonsense! Whatever it is, I'll kiss it and make it better. Now, what's your ailment? Hemorrhoids. <laughs> Dixie, what would you do if I promised to be your prisoner of love? I'd have you thrown in the stockade. I can't believe it. None of those movie stars worked. Tracy wasn't the least bit interested. No, I haven't been this upset since the Pope's last visit. I'm burning mad. Maybe now you'll take my advice. What are you, dear Abby? Don't you have a Christmas tree to hover over? Come on, give him a break. Ah, uh, go sit on a pitchfork. Maybe Tracy has had enough of tough guys. She may be looking for that special kind of man. Special? What do you mean by that? I think I have the answer. And it's heaven sent. Where's an air sick bag when you need one? I'll try it. Girls, girls, girls! Hi, Tracy! Wow, you're in great shape. Well, thanks, Richard. You know, I have my own workout plan. Me too. Don't I look fit? Wow, you look like you could give me a fit. Would you sit down? Welcome back to more knockout action. 
Christian. This is the main event. Boxer versus wrestler for the championship robe. And the title of champion of the knockouts. The wrestler can only win by pinfall or submission, and the boxer can only win by a knockout. Introducing first, from Paris Island, South Carolina, the pride of the Marines, Dixie! The All-American Cheerleader, Wendy! And her second, Mary Jo. Wendy, darling, Wendy, the only way you can beat me is if you take that lead out of your butt and put it in your gloves. She doesn't need a lead. She needs a mask. Wendy rolls under her charging foe. She draws a warning from the ref and a drop kick from Dixie. But the cheerleader regroups and auditions the Marine for the part of a punching bag. The pom-pom girl has her heart set on taking home the champion's green money robe. But she's got to topple Dixie, and she's tough. Her idea of rest and recreation is invading Grenada. The cheerleader punches her way out of that arm hold. She's pounding her more times than Judge Watner's gavel. and Cartella gives Dixie a little extra leverage to bring down Wendy. The soldier picked the perfect second. Cartella is liable to smuggle a few more Marines into this match. She works her way into a Boston Crab, going for a submission. But the pom-pom girl powers out. There's no way she'd quit. Not when she's already bought shoes to match the champion's robe. She pummels the officer. But a low kick drops Wendy like a lead parachute. Dixie presses her advantage. When she rakes her face with that top rope. The ref calls for the break, but there's no truce. She goes right back after her foe, and the Marine shows her the ropes again, the hard way. The official calls for the break. Dixie throws a few choice words, but Wendy throws some choice punches, and she drops the Marine like an overweight anchor. The soldier makes it to her feet. She hauls her opponent up and enlists her into the Air Force. She slams her to the mat. Wendy's back ready to go AWOL after that attack. The Marine goes after her prey. Oh, 
when she takes her over in a big backdrop. And Wendy's spine now spells out S-O-S. The soldier set by the ropes and flattens her with a big splash. This could be it. No, the cheerleader able to kick out of the pin. Dixie steps up the attack, going for another backdrop. But Wendy leapfrogs out. The Marine gets served some punch with a canvas chaser. And Wendy nails Cartella as well. The pom-pom girl cleaned her clock like a precision watchmaker. The soldier rams her into the turnbuckle. But the All-American uses her head and almost takes Dixie's off. The Marine has hit the deck more times than a superstitious card player. And Cartella gets another shot. Next time she'd better smuggle in protective headgear. Dixie nails her with another drop kick. Her aerial attack has turned more tables than a fleet of moving men. She sends her to the ropes, but the cheerleader reverses the beal. Wendy is only allowed to box, and that move may get her another warning from the ref. But Dixie had better issue a storm warning as the pom-pom girl rains blows on her. Wait, Cartella yanks Wendy's leg out from under her and slips Dixie a bully club. The sly soldier shields it from the referee while her second distracts the official. She batters the cheerleader with the club, sending her spine looking for vacation brochures. She ditches the weapon before she can be caught with it. And Dixie sets. A snap suplex drives Wendy to the mat. And Cartella's got the billy club for unsafe keeping. The Marine goes for the pin and a handful of trunks keeps Wendy down for the three count. This has got to be the biggest case of theft since the Brinks job. Earlier, Wendy was able to leapfrog over the soldier and ruin her battle plan. But she was nice enough to give Dixie a consolation prize, a set of matching shots. And a free trip to the canvas. Later, the Marine decided to play matchmaker by having Wendy's head meet the turnbuckle for a tete-a-tete. -tete. But the pom-pom girl put her foot down. And her opponent as well. And there, the blatant interference by Cartella. Tripping Wendy, and then passing the weapon on to Dixie.
the Marine brutalized the All-American with one club she'd never want to join. to give her an earful as well. Cartella locks up with Wendy and forces her out of the ring. Brooklyn attacks Mary Jo. Bambi comes after Cartella. And Valerie dives in the fray. And they're tearing the clothes off each other's back. Bonnie Sue joins in, and Cartella and Valerie give Bambi the 50% off look. I haven't seen this much shredding since the Oliver North trial. It's unbelievable, bodies and clothing are flying everywhere. I haven't seen women tearing at clothing like this since giveaway day at Neiman Marcus. fully covered is Dixie, and that's only because she's wearing the champion's robe. Bambi and Cartella battle in the corner. Maybe the Latins smuggled in an extra outfit there. and Brooklyn and Valerie have been bounced from the room. The knockouts are left in their undergarments, but even that's not taking the fight out of them. The ring looks like a donation site for the Salvation Army. The referee trying to restore some sort of order. The referee's decision still stands, and the champion of the knockouts is Dixie. And the referee tells me, for your unsportsmanlike conduct, each of you will be. Descend on the official. They can't pay the fine without any pockets. But now they're going after his clothes. The girls are peeling him like a grape. And look at those shorts. He didn't make any friends today, but at least his heart's in the right place.
To buy my affection, to me, gold and diamonds, <laughs> they're just empty expressions. If you really want to get to me, you should try giving the gift that keeps on giving, handcuffs and Vaseline. Moth, anything goes. Brooklyn mauling her foe. Going out of her way to deliver those low blows. She learned all her moves on the street. The alley was closed. The ref takes a point away from her, and she responds by giving him a few lumps. She slams her foe to the mat. In this cat fight, she's ready to make the fur fly. And Mary Jo shows her how to hit the trail. It was only a matter of time before this one erupted, and these two could make Mount St. Helen seem calm. The New Yorker ditched one glove already and corrals the Texan. And it's not an okay corral for her. And they both go over the ropes. And Brooklyn gives her a face full of canvas. And again. The construction worker makes her own rules and then breaks them. And Mary Jo slams her into that steel ring post. can tussle with anyone, 
She went to J.R. Ewing's finishing school. But the city girl's ready to finish her off. She virtually stuffs her into the audience. And for the Texan, that's not the right stuff. Mary Jo makes it back to the ring to stop that 20 count. But the construction girl says, don't count on it. And Torch drops her. Melanie rocked by that blow as the biker chops her down. And these two fighters are ready to disregard the bell. But the ref breaks them up. And the lumberjack is already warmed up for round two. She wants to show the biker she's a cut above the rest. She misses with that bolo punch, but she forces her foe to the corner. And Torch strikes back with a kick, extremely illegal. But the only time the biker ever used a rule book was when she needed to start a fire. And Melanie nails her with a hard right. The biker may be running out of gas. And the lumberjack continues with her buzzsaw-like attack. The woodcutter using her height and reach advantage over her opponent. The biker's blows have no authority. Her tank's been siphoned. and Melanie drives her to the mat again. It looks like the torch has been extinguished. Let's get the official word from Dennis Morgan. the biker is unable to put a dent in the lumberjack. But Melanie overpowers her with those sweeping shots. Timber! Beastmaster is in black, but she may wind up in black and blue. Special guest referee Nutsy Fagan trying to separate the combatants, and he almost winds up part of the action. Alexis enraged the Beastmaster by coming to the ring in a fur coat. The wild woman declares she's going to skin Alexis and wear her home. Now scoring effectively with those blows, Officials Jacqueline Stallone and Hal Stone watching intently at ringside. Now let's go back and catch some early action. The wealthy Alexis works her foe to the ropes and nails the Beastmaster with those powerful blows to the head. Give that girl an aspirin.
and the Beastmaster turns the tables. Up until this point, she'd been tamed by her opponent. She needs to let the animal out to take this fight. And the woman in black takes the offensive. Maybe she smells blood, although it's probably Alexis's perfume. She's pounding the Beverly Hills girl from pillar to post. And Alexis hits the deck. The Beastmaster was way behind on the scorecards, but she may have just rendered those cards useless, and Alexis as well. Official word from ring announcer Dennis Morgan. The winner of this match by a knockout, the Beastmaster! And the Beastmaster gets the win, leaving Alexis down and out in Beverly Hills. The crowd not happy with the wild woman. They lead the jeers while she asks for cheers. Tyria. Well, in that case, we better call the whole thing off. Why? What do you have? Prickly heat. Tracy Lords, what a piece. She even makes me feel hot. I know, she's beautiful. I'd love to meet her. Then let's go and have a devil of a time. Wait, you just can't approach her like that. Go to heaven. Don't listen to that goody two-shoes. He's still upset because he lost Jim Baker to me. Let's go. Tracy Lords is a movie star. You're just a referee. She probably only dates other movie stars. <laughs> He's got a point. So what? I've got two of them. If it's movie stars she wants, I know just what to do. <laughs> Hey, yo, Tracy Lord. Oh, hi, Rocky. Hey, what did you think of my boxing career? I think it's like a work of art. Really? Yeah, you've been smeared on more canvases than a Picasso. <laughs> Howdy, I'm Mary Jo. I'm tall in the saddle. And I'm Dr. Fondle. I'm short in the inseam. I want to get into medicine. How about a little medicine getting into you? But I want to learn. I'm considering medical school. Hmm, you could probably get in under the endowment plan. Do you think you could show me the ropes? I prefer satin sheets myself. Is there anything we can go over now? How about the treatment for snake bite? Okay. Good. Now, the first thing you must do is locate the bitten area and suck out the poison. Now, suppose I was bitten right on my... What would happen? You would die! Brooklyn, I want you to think of me as a building in New York City. Good! I'll have you torn down next week! <laughs> Welcome back! a point away from her, and she responds by giving him a few lumps. She slams her foe to the mat. In this cat fight, she's ready to make the fur fly. And Mary Jo shows her how to hit the trail. 
It was only a matter of time before this one erupted, and these two could make Mount St. Helens seem calm. ditched one glove already and corrals the Texan. And it's not an okay corral for her. And they both go over the ropes. And Brooklyn gives her a face full of canvas. And again. The construction worker makes her own rules and then breaks them. And Mary Jo slams her into that steel ring post. Girl can tussle with anyone. She went to J.R. Ewing's finishing school. But the city girl's ready to finish her off. She virtually stuffs her into the audience. And for the Texan, that's not the right stuff. Mary Jo makes it back to the ring to stop that 20 count. But the construction girl says don't count on it. She works her into a step over toe hold. Mary Jo able to kick out. Ha, 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 ha.
Tracy Lords. What a piece. She even makes me feel hot. I know. She's beautiful. I'd love to meet her. Then let's go and have a devil of a time. Wait. You just can't approach her like that. Go to heaven. Don't listen to that goody two-shoes. He's still upset because he lost Jim Baker to me. Let's go. Tracy Lords is a movie star. You're just a referee. She probably only dates other movie stars. <laughs> He's got a point. So what? I've got two of them. If it's movie stars she wants, I know just what to do. <laughs> Hey, yo, Tracy Lord. Oh, hi, Rocky. Hey, what did you think of my boxing career? I think it's like a work of art. Really? Yeah, you've been smeared on more canvases than a Picasso. <laughs> Howdy, I'm Mary Jo. I'm tall in the saddle. And I'm Dr. Fondle. I'm short in the inseam. I want to get into medicine. How about a little medicine getting into you? But I want to learn. I'm considering medical school. Hmm, you could probably get in under the endowment plan. Do you think you could show me the ropes? I prefer satin sheets myself. Is there anything we can go over now? How about the treatment for snake bite? Okay. Good. Now, the first thing you must do is locate the bitten area and suck out the poison. Now, suppose I was bitten right on my... What would happen? You would die! Brooklyn, I want you to think of me as a building in New York City. Good! I'll have you torn down next week! <laughs> Welcome back! The combatants will battle non-stop until there is a winner. Wouldn't date a guy who didn't have a back, because that would mean he had bacteria. Well, in that case, we better call the whole thing off. Why? What do you have? Prickly heat. Tracy Lords, what a piece. She even makes me feel hot. I know, she's beautiful. I'd love to meet her. Then let's go and have a devil of a time. Wait, you just can't approach her like that. Go to heaven. Don't listen to that goody two-shoes. He's still upset because he lost Jim Baker to me. Let's go. Tracy Lords is a movie star. You're just a referee. She probably only dates other movie stars. <laughs> He's got a point. So what? I've got two of them. If it's movie stars she wants, I know just what to do. <laughs> Hey, yo, Tracy Lord. Oh, hi, Rocky. Hey, what did you think of my boxing career? I think it's like a work of art. Really? Yeah, you've been smeared on more canvases than a Picasso. <laughs> Howdy, I'm Mary Jo. I'm tall in the saddle. And I'm Dr. Fondle. I'm short in the inseam. I want to get into medicine. How about a little medicine getting into you? But I want to learn. I'm considering medical school. Hmm, you could probably get in under the endowment plan. Do you think you could show me the ropes? I prefer satin sheets myself. 
Is there anything we can go over now? How about the treatment for snake bite? Okay. Good. Now, the first thing you must do is locate the bitten area and suck out the poison. Now, suppose I was bitten right on my... What would happen? You would die! Brooklyn, I want you to think of me as a building in New York City. Good! I'll have you torn down next week! <laughs> Welcome back! A knockhouse. My fighters have that special flair. They'll make you love them. If you dare, they can be sweet or they can be mean, but they're the best you've ever seen. I'm Wendy, cheering on the team. I'm every football player's dream. When they see me, they change their tone. They want a piece of my end zone. A knockout. A knockout. I cartwheel and I do the splits. My body never calls it quits. I love to stretch out every joint. I'll help you score that extra point. A knockout. A knockout. I'll wipe out Dixie with one flip for the rope, the money, and the championship. That big Marine's headed for defeat. Her only move will be retreat. A knockout. Shut my mouth, I'm on maneuvers way down south. My name is Dixie, I bear arms. Come and surrender to my charms. Knockouts. A knockouts. Your rifle and your bayonet will never, ever stop my threat. Come see me if you're full of fight. My boudoir is the battle side. One of the proud. She won't need a robe, she'll need a shroud. A knockout. A knockout. You met my girls, they're ready to go. They planned a very special show. So you can scream or you can shout. But let the knockouts knock you out. And we're joining this warm-up match already in progress. Alexis from Beverly Hills is in white, and the Beastmaster is in black. But she may wind up in black and blue. Special guest referee, Nutsy Fagan, trying to separate the combatants. And he almost winds up part of the action. Alexis enraged the Beastmaster by coming to the ring in a fur coat. The wild woman declares she's going to skin Alexis and wear her home. Now, And the woman in black takes the offensive. Maybe she smells blood, although it's probably Alexis's perfume. She's pounding the Beverly Hills girl from pillar to post. And Alexis hits the deck. The Beastmaster was way behind on the scorecards, but she may have just rendered those cards useless, and Alexis as well. Now let's get the official word from ring announcer Dennis Morgan. down and out in Beverly Hills. The crowd not happy with the wild woman. They lead the jeers while she asks for cheers. The 
let's go back and catch that knockout. The Beastmaster all over her foe like a cheap suit. And the thought of wearing a cheap suit is enough to send the Beverly Hills girl down for the count. But the wild one decides to hasten that journey with a few parting shots. Don't I look neat in this outfit? Of course. Most elephants look good in trunks. Ladies, please. Talk like that will make me blush. Good. A little red will go with the black and blue I'm going to give you. Did anyone check that barman's green card? They'll be checking your vital signs when I'm through with you. Them's fighting words. Oh, yeah, horse face. Excuse me, ladies. Are you decent? Yes. That's good, because I'm not. Listen, I have good news and I have bad news. What's the bad news? The state requires you all to be thoroughly examined before your matches. Then what's the good news? I get to do it. Oh, you make me sick. to buy my affection. To me, gold and diamonds, huh, they're just empty expressions. If you really want to get to me, you should try giving the gift that keeps on giving, handcuffs and Vaseline. Maybe you can help me get some respect. How, Rodney? I figure with your connections, maybe you can help me with my screen career. Sure, I think you'd be great for the movies. As a leading man. As an usher. You know, Bonnie Sue, with me behind you, you'd win a lot more contests. Sure. For long distance running. Tell me, Cartella, what is your nationality? My family's from Bogota. That makes me pure Colombian. Well, my family's Welsh and Hungarian. That makes me well hung. Look, I'm here for my physical. How much is it? Twenty dollars. That's not too much. <laughs> it's all I can afford. How do you feel about dealing with criminals? Doesn't bother me. As a matter of fact, I happen to be a convicted felon myself. True? I don't believe it. Sure. Once, I was arrested. <laughs> both go over the ropes.
and Brooklyn gives her a face full of canvas. And again, the construction worker makes her own rules and then breaks them. And Mary Jo slams her into that steel ring post. The cowgirl can tussle with anyone. She went to J.R. Ewing's finishing school. But the city girl's ready to finish her off. She virtually stuffs her into the audience. And for the Texan, that's not the right stuff. Mary Jo makes it back to the ring to stop that 20 count. But the construction girl says, don't count on it. She works her into a step over toe hold. Mary Jo able to kick out. And she gives the audience a souvenir. The ref tolling the count again. If they don't make it back by 20, they'll both be disqualified. Brooklyn choking her with a tape from her hands. These brawlers have spent more time on the floor than wall-to-wall -wall carpet. The New Yorker rushes in to break the count, but the cowgirl is right on her tail like a hot branding iron. With all that tape, they're tied up like a couple of mummies, and that's no gauze for celebration. Neither fighter is able to keep this match under wraps. Now she supplies the perfect addition to her outfit, a belt in the back. She drops her with a ram into the turnbuckle. Now the corporate raider rises to the occasion. She sets on the third rope. But Bandy catches her with a shot to the gut. The executive may be out of business. The beach girl hauls her up. And the spine breaker dumps her like a junk bond. There's one, two, Bambi just inches away from that fourth ring post. Valerie trying to hold on for dear life. She charges in for a punch, but the beach girl drives her into the corner and takes the fourth post. Slashing shot to the stomach. And Valerie winds up doing herself in by charging her foe in the last corner. Bambi proved to her that life is a beach.
just an old softy. I cry at weddings. I collect mementos from special evenings. I get all sentimental when I go through the family album. But there's one thing that... Alexis enraged the Beastmaster by coming to the ring in a fur coat. The wild woman declares she's going to skin Alexis and wear her home. Now scoring effectively with those blows. Officials Jacqueline Stallone and Hal Stone watching intently at ringside. Now let's go back and catch some early action. The wealthy Alexis works her foe to the ropes and nails the Beastmaster with those powerful blows to the head. Give that girl an aspirin. And the Beastmaster turns the tables. Up until this point, she'd been tamed by her opponent. She needs to let the animal out to take this fight. And the woman in black takes the offensive. Maybe she smells blood, although it's probably Alexis's perfume. She's pounding the Beverly Hills girl from pillar to post. And Alexis hits the deck. The Beastmaster was way behind on the scorecards, but she may have just rendered those cards useless, and Alexis as well. Official word from ring announcer Dennis Morgan. The winner of this match by a knockout, the Beastmaster! And the Beastmaster gets the win, leaving Alexis down and out in Beverly Hills. The crowd not happy with the wild woman. They lead the jeers while she asks for cheers. Let's go back and catch that knockout. And Cartella gives Dixie a little extra leverage to bring down Wendy. The soldier picked the perfect second. Cartel is liable to smuggle a few more Marines into this match. She works her way into a Boston Crab, going for a submission. But the pom-pom girl powers out. There's no way she'd quit. Not when she's already bought shoes to match the champion's robe. She pummels the officer. But a low kick drops Wendy like a lead parachute. Dixie presses her advantage. When she rakes her face with that top rope. The ref calls for the break but there's no truce. She goes right back after her foe. And the Marine shows her the ropes again, the hard way. The official calls for the break. Dixie throws a few choice words, but Wendy throws some choice punches, and she drops the Marine like an overweight anchor. The 
The soldier makes it to her feet. She hauls her opponent up and enlists her into the Air Force. She slams her to the mat. Wendy's back ready to go AWOL after that attack. The Marine goes after her prey. Oh, and she takes her over in a big backdrop. And Wendy's spine now spells out S-O-S. The soldier set by the ropes. And flattens her with a big splash. This could be it. No, the cheerleader able to kick out of the pin. Now the corporate raider rises to the occasion. She sets on the third rope. But Dandy catches her with a shot to the gut. The executive may be out of business. The beach girl hauls her up. And the spine breaker dumps her like a junk bond. There's one, two, three. Bambi just inches away from that fourth ring post. Valerie trying to hold on for dear life. She charges in for a punch, but the beach girl drives her into the corner and takes the fourth post. Slashing shot to the stomach. And Valerie winds up doing herself in by charging her foe in the last corner. Bambi proved to her that life is a beach. an old softy. I cry at weddings. I collect mementos from special evenings. I get all sentimental when I go through the family album. But there's one thing that really makes me all warm inside. Hot water animals. Oh. Oh. Welcome back to more Knockout Section.
Nancy. You know you're gonna watch them if you're 10 or 60. Oh, do you want to knock them or do you want to treat? Well, watch my girls fight in your ringside seat. Knockouts. A knockouts. My name is Brooklyn and I've perfected the way to get big things erected. I do my work, no ifs and buts, but baby, I'm best with bolts and nuts. Knockouts. A knockout. I'm from New York and here to say I'm the broad who made Broadway. You better be tough, baby. I got plans for a big jackhammer in my hand. Ooh. Knockout. A knockout. This Mary Jo is just a clown and I'm the one who tear her down. But just to give her one last thrill, I'll have her buried on Boot Hill. Yeah. Knockout. A knockout. I'm Mary Jo, your yellow rose. I ride the range in pantyhose. I'm from Dallas, that's my home. I'll show you where the buffalo roam. A knockout. A knockout. A western girl's got to be tough. I'm one rider who likes it rough. So I make sure some time is found for you and me to horse around. Knockouts. A knockout. I'm fat in Brooklyn. She's from the city. When I get done, she won't be pretty. Cause this cowgirl's gonna whip her tail. And Brooklyn's gonna hit the trail. Knockouts. A knockout. My girls are beauties, but they're tough. They want to show you all their stuff. So each one will make you scream out, wow, there's nothing my girls won't do right now. My name is Melanie and I'm a fine. I'm a lumberjack with an axe to grind. I'm from up north, as you can see. Just like the trees, men pine for me. Knockouts. To me, a man's a piece of wood. When they're both hard, you know they're good. I'm one tough lady, and that's a fact. And if you don't like it, you can kiss my axe. A knockout. A knockout. I'm gonna battle Valerie and that girl. Are you a real doctor? Certainly, Wendy. I took the Hippocritic Oath. Isn't that the Hippocratic Oath? Not the way I operate. Oh. <laughs> Stop crying. If you're a good girl, I'll give you a lollipop. And what if I'm a bad girl? <laughs> I'll give you 50 bucks. <laughs> What's wrong? I don't want to talk about it. Nonsense. Whatever it is, I'll kiss it and make it better. Now, what's your ailment? Hemorrhoids. <laughs> Dixie, what would you do if I promised to be your prisoner of love? I'd have you thrown in the stockade. <laughs> I can't believe it. None of those movie stars worked. Tracy wasn't the least bit interested. No, I haven't been this upset since the Pope's last visit. I'm burning mad. Maybe now you'll take my advice. What are you, dear Abby? Don't you have a Christmas tree to hover over? Come on, give him a break. Ah, go sit on a pitchfork. Maybe Tracy has had enough of tough guys. She may be looking for that special kind of man. Special? What do you mean by that? I think I have the answer. And it's heaven sent. Where's an air sick bag when you need one? I'll try it. Girls, girls, girls! Hi, Tracy! Wow, you're 
in great shape. Thanks, Richard. You know, I have my own workout plan. Me too. Don't I look fit? Wow, you look like you could give me a fit. Why don't you sit down? <laughs> Welcome back to more knockout action. This is the main event. Boxer versus wrestler for the championship robe. And the title of champion of the knockouts. The wrestler can only win by pinfall or submission. And the boxer can only win by a knockout. Introducing first, from Paris Island, South Carolina, the pride of the Marines, Dixie! 